welcome to our new show on the Crummy Talk Show and today we were discussing reoffending rates and why it's a problem. So we're going to start off with discussing the John, oh, what's his name, John Venables case regarding the James Bulger murder simply because recently he's reoffended and he's been sentenced to 14 months in prison for having indecent images of children. And we've made that the face of our case today simply because his initial crime had such a huge impact on society and now he's gone again to reoffend for the second time. For the second time. So we need to we want to understand the rates of reoffending and how and what needs to be done to stop reoffending. So Let's take it from there. With that being said, um, we obviously want to open up um, the floor and give a brief description or definition even of what um, reoffending re is, <clears throat> as we like to give different definitions. According to Google, um, it says, four words, commit a further offence, um, which obviously to me personally is not an in-depth definition I don't usually go by Google definitions but I like to give them um, to the viewers um, so they can get a bit more of a basic understanding of what we're actually talking about as opposed to getting too theoretical too quickly um, according to the Ministry of Justice um, reoffending refers to adults or juvenile offenders um, that have been released from custody um, or who received a non-custodial con conviction at court um, or even received a um, caution of some sort um, and that was obviously in their latest bulletin um, we will refer to the statistics that were brought up in that uh, a little bit later um, firstly I just want to ask um, and open the floor with a question um, do you think that reoffending rates um, affect the amount of work for the criminal justice system? I think it does simply because at every stage of a criminal's life he has to there's some form of the service or the system that he faces so when he goes through the probation service through the courts to the prison and then he comes back out it's at every stage someone's doing something but for them and they for them it might seem like they're doing the right thing they've mm -hmm. done their work and you know and um, the criminal has faced his punishment and he's learned and he's going to go back out in society and he reintegrate. But when he reoffends, it just opens up new paths to say that something's gone wrong somewhere. But it's Not exactly pinpointing a specific service or a specific individual, like the police officers or the lawyers or a probation service officer. Mm -hmm. It's just saying that, yes, you may not be wrong, but there is something wrong. There's a flaw somewhere and that needs to be looked at to see where something's going wrong in, and how it can be Do you think changed? there's a level of accountability? Do you think obviously if, say, for example, we'll keep using John Venables. John Venables came out, re-offended. Um, do you think that somebody should have be held accountable, um, obviously somewhere down the line, for his re-offending? Or do you think it's just, it doesn't matter how much you we assist as a you know how much people in the criminal justice system assist offenders while they're in um obviously in the system um do you think that they should hold some sort of accountability or do you think it's just the offender i think sometimes it, it i think it depends on individuals i think in you need to understand their background and their history to understand why they reoffended in the first place to Yes, you can ha hold so many people accountable for someone doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So with this case, he was 10 years old when he first committed his crime. You can blame the parents for not paying attention to the kids. You can, pay, uh, you can blame the education system for not educating the kid on what the norms of society are. But you can blame anyone. There's, it's easier to pay. Who, 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 as a, yeah, obviously then he was a child. Who he's an adult now. Who would you blame now? Do you, do, do you would you say that his years in um exactly so his years in prison? So do you blame the prison system for not showing him and making him understand that what's wrong because he went in to be punished? So should he have had a different 
form of punishment. Mm -hmm. It's easy, like I said, it's easy to pinpoint one person and blame one person, but what we need to understand is that overall something's gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Overall there was a problem with everything that, at every stage that John Venables went through, something went wrong. But it also depends on individuals as well because you will get some individuals who, after they act, are guilty and feel remorse. And then they will come out to be a better person. But there will be some people who will go through the whole justice system feeling like the justice system is there to punish them. Mm -hmm. And they will come out with stronger views against them simply because it's just creating more hatred. So it, it can depend on the justice system, uh, but it also depends on individuals. And in order for it to work, they both need to work together. Yeah, I was going to say, with that being said, do you think that there needs to be a bit more communication yeah. and a bit more of a, a solid foundation about how things move forward? Um, yes, because it's easier for, to pass a criminal from one stage to another. But if those two, if those, all those stages are not communicating with each other and not showing that this is what we've done, this is what you need to do in order to get the main goals that they're trying to achieve, mm -hmm. they, at the end of the day, they want that these criminals come out and not reoffend because it does make more work yeah. and it does question their jobs and their accountability and it, and it questions everything they've done so far. So in order for us to understand reoffending, we need to know where it's gone wrong, how the system's gone wrong, how the individual and then how we can improve. and how we can improve. So there are stages, but at each stage you need to communicate. Yeah. Definitely, and that goes with a lot of other things, um, but obviously we're focusing on rear offending today. Um, I'm just going to throw out some stats, um, obviously from the Ministry of Justice um, website, or the Office of National Statistics, I've got hit on this side of the form. Um, these are easily obtainable from the internet. Um, we only printed out the brief summary sheet. Uh, which was ironic because we both actually look <laughs> both the same thing. It, and yeah, we turned up today like, oh, I looked at that as well. Um, but yeah, they are obtainable online. Uh, we will set, put a link on the website if you obviously need to get to that um, and you want to see these stats for these yourself um, and not just hear us blabbering on about them. Um, but, but yeah, after this, we'll you know have a look into you know what we think of these statistics, etc. According to the Ministry of Justice and their statistics that they've obtained, the overall proven um, reoffending rate was 29.6% um, for that quarter that obviously they've measured. These statistics came out on the 25th of January this year, um, by the way, so they are very recent and they are the most up-to-date ones. Um, but it does say here that the rates haven't changed, they've, they've remained unchanged, for the, as they were the same for the previous quarter. Um, and at most there's been a 0.02 um, percentage rise which is very 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 low um, hence why the stats are still the same um, but as a whole um, they've decreased by about 2% um, and that was since 2005 so and where the rates were at about 32% of reoffending uh, the overall reoffending rate um, in the country um, so that says, well, a 2% drop, well, something must be happening. Uh, but from 2005, which was, what, 13 years ago, is 2% really good enough? Um, what would you argue? Would, do you think that's okay? Do you think that's sufficient? Um, or do you not? Um, and then breaking that statistic down, adult offenders had a proven re-offending rate of 28.7%, uh, which, again, remains unchanged. Um, and at the most, there was a 0.01% increase um, from the previous quarter um, I'm just throwing all these stats out um, and I'm just going to move on to the next two um, quickly as I says I'll put this up for you to have a look into yourself um, surprisingly ju the, the rate of juvenile offenders who re-offended um, increased um, by about four to five percent um, since 2005, and since the previous quarter, increased by about 0.5 percent, um, and the rate now stands at 42.3. So that's 42.3 of juvenile offenders have reoffended within the last quarter. Um, so then again, that's something we need to think about. Why? Why are the Why are the adults 
not really reoffending, but why are the young people reoffending? What what are the juveniles doing that? I mean, what are the adults doing that the juveniles are not? Mm. Um, and uh, there's been a decrease in adults released from custody or on court orders, um, and their rates of reoffending have decreased. At the rate is now thirty seven point four. Um, and that's been a decrease of 0.6% um, compared to the previous quarter. That's the highest decrease that we've got here on the sheet. Um, and again, it's adults that the, the rate of adults, you know, yeah. the, the, the demographic is adults. So what I, what is it that adults are doing? What services are adults receiving? Um, is it something to do with their life stage? Is it anything to do with that? Maybe these are things we, we, we should look into. Uh, we would definitely advise if you are um, in this field and you do have a line of research in clarifying and understanding reoffending to, to please get in touch yeah. with either myself or Noshin or Laura or anybody else that um, assists on the panel um, just to give us a bit of understanding so we can share that with other people. Um, but yeah, with obviously those statistics in mind, um, do you believe there, sh there, there could be anything to um, implemented to change these rare offending rates because obviously as we've established they've not not majorly decreased but not majorly increased either yeah so following on that point I think the government are trying to do something I was reading a report where it says that there will be an additional hundred pound sorry a hundred million in <laughs> annual pounds. I was gonna say hundred pounds that's not enough hundred million in annual funding for the prison services, they'll be uh, they're introducing a new program as well. It's called a prison estate transforming program, which is referred to as PETP. And by the end of 2018, they're looking to add an extra 2,500 um, prison officers. So it seems like what they're doing already has helped reoffending not increase, mm -hmm. but from the basis of prisons yes so it feels like what they're doing is fine so it's stable but we want it to decrease we want the reoffending rates to greet to decrease so that offenders don't come through the system again and again so it seems that a lot needs to be done mm -hmm. like from the initial point we're a lot better but i think there, there needs a lot more work to ensure that really in all, do you think in all aspects of the criminal yeah. justice system or just the prison okay um, yeah and I, I definitely agree um, but I think things like I think you've mentioned this in obviously another conversation you've had but I think the things need to be a lot more specific and to, you know and suitable for the individual yeah. as opposed to um, just generic things being done to prevent reoffending. I think we need to look at specifically what the actual individuals like, um, and obviously moving forward from that, you know, the specific type of you know assistance that people get. Um, do you believe personally that offenders, um, especially those that are reoffended or those that you know are probably at the cliff edge of you know, potentially reoffending. Do you think that they actually have enough support throughout the criminal justice system, or even not even just the criminal justice system at home, families, friends? Do you think? I think there's two points to this. Like some individuals can get all the support they possibly can, but they will still reoffend. But then there's some who might not get. The support mm -hmm. and then still reoffend. I think you just need to look at it as an, like we said, as an individual, and to see that what kind of support and each individual, because not everyone's the same. Everyone has different reasons. Everyone has different background, and you need to, like, it's okay to say that this is what we're doing to help the reoffending rates decrease. But so, and like instead of looking at everyone as a whole and trying to change everything as a whole, it it may be easier to. It may not be easier, but it would be ideal to think of everyone as an individual because each person needs a different sort of help. Yeah. And in order to help that individual not reoffend, you need to look at his case specifically rather than looking at the broad yeah. picture. So as opposed to just saying, oh, well, I've got this template here for offender A and offender B. And offender A is totally different to offender B, but I'm still going to use the same tick list and the yeah. same checklist in hopes that 
I can get some sort of similar response and nine times out of ten everybody's different um, like you said some people just can't be helped yeah. unfortunately some offenders i.e. John Venables um, I personally don't think that he can be helped I think he's way too lost in the system yeah. um, and you know I'm not going to say he will re-offend in the future but based on you know his his track record there's a potential that he may re-offend when he gets released again mm -hmm. um but obviously if there's as you said individual things to put in place and implement to support him while he's actually in custody again um maybe uh, he, in his he might case not i don't think he the system has failed him i think he's, he's failed, failed himself. himself i think with him it's it's i think there's some people who've got past the point where nothing can be done mm -hmm. and I think he's one individual where no matter how much support he'll get now it's infiltrated in his mind that this is his way of life this is what he thinks is correct and it he will continue to do so to be fair do you think he was ever obviously the whole idea of you know not reoffending is to assist you know to, to ensure you can get reintegrated yeah. back into society into society do you ever think he even had a chance no I don't I I don't think he ever had a chance to try to get back into society simply because of the crime, the crime that he committed. I don't and know because if he was even part of society. As bad as he sounds, I don't even know if he was even part of society then. Yeah. To even but in his case, because there was so much media attention around him at such a young age, and because it was to keep the society calm, that there needed to be some form of punishment, which is why they were tried in adult courts. So, in order to keep the peace mm -hmm. in society, he was punished. But those, I think, it was ten years. Those ten years of being yeah, or eight just years short, in just short. yeah, eight years. Eight years of being in pres prison. Did that help? Evidently mm -hmm. not. Uh, uh, Based on the of Israel, because he's reoffending twice now. This is the second time around he's been he's reoffending. So it just shows that he maybe there was support throughout those eight years for him but i just feel like he's failed himself there's mm -hmm. nothing we can do for him yeah it's a shame but then we can use him an example as to, an example to, to see to show that what was done in those eight years when he was in the prison system what was done and how we can improve like but we as, yeah. like i said we have to think of criminals as individuals but we can use this individual's case to probably use on other others, yeah. individuals to see that because his case was so big and so it had so much attention that the, with that though I know we were always referring to Venables, Venables, Venables there was Thompson as well yeah. we've never heard anything to say Thompson's reoffending yeah. so why do you see what yeah, I mean? so, yeah. so it's, it's just just like you say we need to do that whole individual yeah. um, so what, the what was run, done right with Thompson um, of what was done wrong with Venables or was it that they both had the same type of support but one just came out to be different different the than end, the other yeah. one so it just depends on individuals as well that like we, like we said so many times the system can try to help you as much as it can but if you're not willing to accept the help nothing can it's be gonna, done yeah, to true. help you bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy there. yeah um and that's us finishing up today um well for the month if obviously you want to discuss any of our matters or concerns about reoffending, if this is a point of interest to you uh, do get in touch with us uh, we are happy to engage over any forms of social media if you obviously want to come and meet us for a coffee um obviously get in touch on social media as well i've been janice and this is she uh, <laughs> sorry i put you on the spot um and that's the crew talk for this month um, so look out on our website and look out on social media for any updates and any posts that we make regarding future shows, previous shows, etc. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.